All right, I'm going to talk a bit about today, um, about kind of a new idea I've been percolating on. Uh, I like to think about new ideas, uh, lots of new things. I seem to be always trying to think about something new, and some of them actually come to fruition. This is one I'm really excited about. I think it has to happen, but to happen, it's got to receive funding. So actually what I'm doing right now is trying to figure out how to pull money from corporations that use open source heavily for their benefit to actually move the community forward. Because um, I've done a lot of work in open source over the years. NumPy, SciPy, I've been doing a lot of work in business to try to bring money to those projects. Haven't been entirely successful in bringing the money to NumPy and SciPy that I've really, that's why I started Anaconda, that's why I left academia, that's why I went to NThought. The whole goal was to fund NumPy and SciPy. We're just getting there. Fortunately, those projects have matured and, and continued on even without my help. Uh, but I still have this deep passion to connect companies and their usage. We have billions of dollars of value being created in open source and being used by companies, and yet it's not funding the fund fundamentals. The maintainers, the work going on is not properly funded. We have, a real, we have some real work to do. We still have some work to do. So we're still trying to figure out how to align incentives, how to make that work. I've known about this problem since I got started, and we, that's a different topic we can talk about. I want to talk about a technology today I'm excited about, but it's going to require funding. It doesn't exist yet, but it should exist. It's called ePython. I've got a name to it. Now it exists because it's got a name. Uh, and it's, it, the idea is how do we extend Python in the future? How do we really work at building new extensions? Kind of a little bit of, and we'll talk a little bit about how you do it now. Uh, just quick, brief, many of you know me, but I've been doing this for a while through many incantations. My recent one is Quonsite, still involved as a board member of Anaconda. Peter's going to talk later. He's still moving Anaconda's mission forward, excitingly. But Quonsite, we're basically a spin. We, we, we see ourselves as the foundation, what gave rise to Anaconda. We're taking that energy, rebranded as Quonsite, and giving rise to new things. Uh, Anaconda, we consider one of our first spin outs. We have other things happening. So lots happening around the Quonsite ecosystem, and, but it's all happening because of bright people like you capable leaders who we have to find and nurture and grow. Uh, our core business at Quonsite is Quonsite Labs Community Work Orders. That's one key way we're actually funneling money from industry to open source directly. We also do open, open source consulting, standard services around the PyData stack, Jupyter optimization, do custom visualization, ML consulting, and we have staffing mentoring, a new innovative project called Residency that actually helps people transition from academia into industry. So if you're interested in our business, come talk to me. Come later to the social, please come talk to me. Quonsite Labs is kind of what this talk is under. Quonsite Labs is an open source research lab. The intent is to grow a team of 50, 70, 100 people maintaining the core data Python stack. Currently, we're about three. Now, continue, or Anaconda has about 11, 12 people. So I, can, I see this as a joint effort with, with uh, efforts we've done before. We also have added a venture fund. Come talk to me about that. It's very interesting. This is to fund the companies and the spin-outs that come out of our activities. So it's an important key missing part that I didn't have before, but now we're pushing it. So Python keeps growing. So all this activity, all this energy of you know, me and my closest thousand friends in the uh, PyData ecosystem have really done a lot of incredible work. And we watched this trend. Everybody cares about Python now. You know, 10 years ago, we were clamoring at the doors telling people you gotta care about Python. Python's something important to your business. Now, we don't have to tell them that. They're coming to us going, hey, Python's important to my business, but they're kind of confused about what, how it works, how, what they do. Do I just take this fruit that's growing off the tree? Do I have to water it? Is there an irrigation canal I have to keep changing? What, what, how does this work? In particular, it's the Pandas, Scikit-Learn, Jupyter ecosystem that's really contributed to that. Some Django, some Flask, but it's been primarily this data science ecosystem. And then our friends at Facebook and Google who have taken their deep learning stacks and made them available in Python and brought a lot of value, but also a lot of confusion to the, to the ecosystem. So we're working with that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to see the incredible innovation that's happening. And Python has now taken over as the dominant language. Yay, isn't that exciting? Which comes with its own it's new problems and new challenges. We're all really excited, and many of you are here because of that. Python is not just a language. It's this entire ecosystem of thousands of projects, each with its own color, its own culture, its own story. NumFocus is an organization that tries to gather all those together and provide some substrate and support for them, but it's a large story. And the most recent deep learning story on top has been very exciting. Now, that huge ecosystem of extensions to Python is why it's popular. Python's popular because of all these extensions. How those extensions are made also limits where Python goes. And so that what I want to talk about today is how do we make sure Python continues to be successful in the future? Because the keys to Python's success, in my mind, a little opinionated short list here, module extensibility, easy to extend, new types and functions, easy to build, protocol overloading, interoperability. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but extending Python, I have my friend Elon here, Elon Wave. Uh, I, I decided to use an example from Elon called Bitarray because it's a very simple example of how Python used to be extended and still how you can extend it today. Python, the C Python runtime is built in a way that you can extend. 
and you can look at the integer objects and every object and how they're built, and you can build new ones. And that's what Elon did with Bitarray. It's what I did with NumPy. It's what lots of people have done to create more capability in Python. And it's very powerful. And so, you know, there's, you basically can create classes in Python, but ultimately it's the low level. It's an underscore Bitarray that is a low level C file that you have to define. And you create this extension module, define names in it. It looks a lot different than Python, right? You're writing C code. And, it can, and if, you have, if you're not familiar with C, it's gobbledygook. If you are familiar with C, you can basically follow it and kind of see how you do it. And, and cut and paste programming is, is definitely how people get started. They take somebody else's extension module and they go and grab it and then they replace it for their names. Um, but ultimately you have this table. The table maps names to C pointers. So these names in Python point to some C function at the low level. You define that C function, has a particular interface, takes objects, pi objects everywhere. You have to unpack those pi objects into C level structures, write functions. It's pretty straightforward, but somewhat tedious. Uh, and then there's a type, there's a type table and you make a new type. So this is how you make a new class. So instead of saying class in C, you build this type table, right? With all the, the effectively the magic methods. Uh, in, uh, replaced by C methods. So it's not terrible work, but it's work. And that's the work of a writing an extension module. Uh, and you can see these all over the uh, internet. You can go and there's many of these. Look in the Python source code, and the Python source code is full of this, the C Python source code. So it's great, super powerful, but does require care. You have, to, you have access to all the Python machinery. This is how Python itself works and how all the objects run. You can see that. You're literally extending Python. It's as if you were, were Guido, creating Python and its built-ins, its standard library built-ins. So it's incredible speed. It's as fast as machines work. You have access to all the power. But you have tunnel reference counting, which is usually where people, the people struggle. It's, you're managing the memory yourself. Error handling can be tedious. Uh, the initialization can bite you badly if you're not careful. Uh, you have uh, pointers that aren't zero that you access, pointers that are zero that you access, seg, seg faults galore if you're debugging this. And then other runtimes, the big one is the other runtimes. In the past, CPython was kind of the runtime. Now we've got PyPy and IronPython and Jython, and all the world loves new runtimes. Now Rust Python, MicroPython, there's literally two dozen runtimes of Python. None of them can use your extension module. They all use the Python language. None of them can use your language because you've written effectively a CPython extension only. And that's kind of the state of the world. There really isn't a general way to extend Python. There's only a way to extend CPython. So not too surprising. Today, it's a little better. Like, you don't really have to do that today. And I actually don't recommend you do, except in the most rare cases. Most of the time today, if you want to extend Python, there's great tools out there. Use Numba in most cases. Just write Numba, and it does the compilation for you. And you can write a class. Um, use Cython. Cython's been with us for a while, and it's a great tool. You can use it, and it's kind of like a Python-ish. Um, or use CC++ and then use PyBind. Uh, use an automatic extension generator. Um, and maybe you're using MyPy, eventually MyPyC. So today, that's what you should do. And only in the most rare cases should you reach out for something. This actually helps us. If you do this, we're actually helped for the future. As you'll see, uh, so Numba is a JIT compiler. You, there's many talks on Numba, I'm not going to detail. Cython, if you're not familiar with it, there's a lot of tools there. It's a very powerful tool. It's been around actually since NumPy came out. We used a version of Cython called Pyrex, but now Cython is, uh, it's in SciPy. Pandas is used, written using Cython. Um, basic use, I'm going to skip over that for time. Come talk to me if you're interested. What about the future? We're going to go from here. And where we go from here, I think, is we've got to make a way for people to be able to extend Python with one syntax that then supports multiple runtimes. Like, it's really critical for the future of Python that we do something like this. So we have this enormous capability stack that we talked about earlier, and it's fantastic. Everyone loves it, except we have a lot of sadness for, uh, and I've been part of that sadness with the PyPy community. PyPy is a great project, and I've interacted deeply with many members of that Python project. Ten years ago, I told them, this is great, but you're never going to be able to run NumPy and SciPy on this stack unless you figure out what to do. And so they, they've done some work, but their work has been to kind of um, mimic the CPython API, effectively make CPython extensions work. And that's great, sort of, and it's sort of, sort of and it works, but it's not really fast, and it's kind of uh, bulky. Uh, we really, and, but yet it's iterative and you can do it. What we really need to do is move the extension community forward. Get the NumPy, SciPy, all the people from instead of writing C code to do extensions, you write something else that then can be targeted to C code, be targeted to PyPy, be targeted to Rust Python. That's, that's what, this, what I'm proposing. That's what I'm talking about doing. Because these extensions ultimately are a fantastic capability and they give us a more enormous um, present ability, but they're an anchor to the future. They don't let 
uh, the Python community to go forward. I was talking to the Python core developers, uh, many of the, the steering committee, I know that many of them are my friends, have been around for a long time, so I've gotten to know a lot of people. And it's great, they're really excited about all these extensions, but all of them would love to have some mechanism to not be anchored. They love the success of NumPy, but they recognize that NumPy is also one of the biggest challenges to moving the C Python runtime forward. NumPy uses the C Python API extensively, which is great, gives it some of its power, but it's also an anchor, it doesn't let the C Python API change much because it's a lot of work to kind of keep everybody forward. So it has to be done in concert. There's gotta be a community effort to move things forward together. Everybody wants this to happen. It just needs energy and, and, and some capital, a little bit of money to get started. So what do we need? We need a way to extend Python that targets multiple runtimes by default. So once you write your extension, you write your NumPy, you write your uh, graph library, you write your uh, really cool algorithm, UMAP, you want to make sure that that can work, not just with CPython, but at least PyPy, Rust Python, MicroPython, and Jython, Iron Python. We'll get our industry friends to help fund that. It's definitely possible. And the ability to add new runtime. So if somebody comes out and says, hey, we're going to add this new runtime for Python, PyPy. We're going to write Rust Python, MicroPython. They're also saying, okay, what about the extension languages? What's your extension language? How are you going to provide a runtime for those extensions as well? That, the answer has to be yes, that's possible. Uh, I believe the time has come we can use a subset of typed Python. The whole key to extensions is you have to have types. You've got to have a types language. You've got to have some way to type data. We have that. Uh, the MyPy work has created typed Python. We have type annotations. We actually now have typing, optional typing in Python, but that optional typing can become a requirement of ePython or extended Python to create a domain-specific subset, a domain-specific language in, in Python. So it's almost like take Cython, reframe it a little bit, instead of making a superset of Python, make a subset of Python with types and objects where needed, specialized objects where needed in order to make things work. So that's the easy part. Defining that language is not too hard, actually, and there's a pretty clear path to do it. And then you've got to get multiple extensions to go that direction. We're actually part of the way there. It's not like we have to start over from scratch. Pandas already is in Cython. Going from Cython to ePython is a simple, simple affair. A lot of people in the NumPy community would like to rewrite NumPy in a higher level language. That's a pretty easy affair too. So my proposal is called ePython. Uh, this ePython is intended to be kind of in between. You have Cython, you have Numba, you have MyPy, Nudica. ePython's kind of this right in the middle. Uh, how would it work? You have input file. Input file is basically a subset of Python. It's a .py file. And then it runs through ePython and creates extensions for the different runtimes. So for CPython, we could already use Cython. Like that's an easy one, actually. Getting, and then the others is that we gotta extend that PyPy, we gotta extend Rust Python, extend MicroPython to use this extended Python. So if we can get the community to be behind the idea of an ePython, then effectively Python becomes, here's the Python syntax and here's how you extend it. And if you wanna make a runtime of Python, that's great, but you gotta also have a way to extend it that supports this these type languages. So how? So we can actually do this. The technology for this is not the hard part. That's actually the easy part. I've got people lined up who could work on this. I've got people in the PyPy community who are excited about it. We've got people in the NumPy community excited about it. We've got the Python community excited about it. The one thing we miss is money. Uh, I think we need about $6 million. All right, so let's open up our wallets. I'll pass around a plate. <laughs> Maybe we can do it right now. <laughs> no. Uh, we probably can't in this room, but I do believe that in the larger room of the world, that's not much money. That's a very tiny amount for the amount of money that's actually being spent on Python, the workarounds that are being spent. So the real goal here is to actually create a mechanism. We call it a cooperative, a cooperative community work order, a way for people to jointly to fund projects working on open source. And that's really the goal of, open, of Quantsite Labs. Open Team is a new initiative, it's a new idea to actually help this process as well because ePython is just one of many cooperative community work orders that could exist. In fact, I think a lot of open source can be funded this, this way if we just create a marketplace that connects funding partners, funding people with managing people. Effectively, what you have to have is you have to have the people do the work, someone to project manage the work, and you have to have someone to fund the work. And a lot of times, they just can't connect with each other. They don't know what's going on, they don't know who to talk to, they don't, the, the people who have the purse springs don't know about the people that can actually do the work. There's just lack of communication. So Open Team is a marketplace. I'm not here to talk about open teams, but happy to talk to you about it later. I have David Charbonneau here. He's the CTO. Uh, I don't know if Eunice is here today. Eunice is our COO. We've got a team, and Henry, we've got a team working on this right now. And in fact, if you go to openteams.com, you'll see ePython. It's one of the initiatives. This is a very alpha product right now, Open Teams is. It's, it's rapidly evolving, rapidly changing. But our goal is to have thousands of initiatives. And 
thousands of funders and a place where they can connect and work together. Uh, but you can see it there. It's still evolving. Uh, it's basically an embedded domain specific language intended to help community members. It's both creation of the, this, pro, this proposal is both the creation of the Python language as well as the porting of a few key projects to use it so that they can be targeted at different runtimes. Uh, so thank you. I'm happy to answer questions later, but I appreciate you coming to PyData and thanks for your patience earlier.